Siding with the child can be dangerous on a lot of different levels. I think of the first time in my life when I realized that siding with the child was dangerous. And that was in my childhood when I learned very, very early on, sort of in an unconscious way even, that siding with my own self was dangerous. Feeling my own feelings and saying, I have a right to feel these feelings was dangerous. I give the example many times. This is going to be a sort of a general example, but my parents harmed me in all sorts of different ways, my mother and my father. And when I had reactions to the ways in which they harmed me, when I had sadness, anger, grief, frustration, rage even, they hated me even more. They rejected me and harmed me even more. So that me siding with myself by feeling my feelings, feeling my rage, sadness, anger, frustration, horror, was not safe for me. I learned that having my feelings and siding with my own feelings was dangerous. So what I learned instead was that when they harmed me, I had to not take my own side. I had to take their side in order to get them to love me more, in order to fit into my troubled family system. So that's the first way that I learned in a very painful way by trauma early on that siding with the child was dangerous. Now I think of myself as an adult. And I think of myself, well, having friends who have children and also having been a therapist for many years and hearing clients of mine who had children or even people who wanted to send me their children in psychotherapy and realizing that in all these different situations, being an adult who sides with the child can be a very dangerous thing. For the child! Okay, for starters, it could be dangerous for me because I've noticed this many times when people, sometimes people who I'm even friends with, telling me dynamics that are going on with their children. And I realize, wait a second, you are doing bad things to your child. Your child's reactions, the things that you don't like about your child are often simply reactions to different ways in which you have mistreated them, perhaps even traumatized them. And when I have brought that up, when I have come to the defense of their child, so often the parents don't like me. They reject me. Or they blame me. They say, you're wrong. Or the worst case scenario is they take it out more on their child. I think of this case of being out in the streets of New York City or any place in the world. I've seen this all over the world, some places more, some places less, where I see people mistreating their children abusing their children, sometimes physically abusing their children, sometimes verbally abusing their children. And sometimes I have said something. Sometimes I've intervened verbally. Sometimes I've wanted to and haven't done it. Because what I've seen is so often when I have intervened, it doesn't help. And often I've intervened when I've said something, stop saying that to that child or don't hit that child anymore. The person might stop. But then I realize when they get home, they're going to take out their rage at me for me calling them out on their child even more because they can get away with it. Okay, maybe they can't legally get away with hitting their child so much. Sometimes they can, but they can certainly get away with manipulating their child more, verbally abusing their child more, giving their child the silent treatment more, rejecting them, abandoning them. Parents are allowed to do this. And sometimes when people side with their child more, the parent takes it out even more on the child. I think of different ways in my childhood. Well, my mom saw my dad verbally abusing me a lot, physically abusing me sometimes, really in nasty ways, and she didn't intervene. She didn't side with me for all sorts of different reasons. But one of the reasons was if she had sided with me, my dad would have rejected her. So she had selfish motives. She thought, you know, I don't want my husband to reject me, so I will reject my child. I'll let him do these things. Now, there were other reasons. Because they had a relational contract where they were both allowed to abuse me in different ways. My father saw my mother doing all sorts of terrible things to me, weird things to me, perverse things to me, sexually abusive things to me, manipulative things to me, really crazy stuff to me. He didn't stand up for me. He didn't side with me because he knew that if he did that, she would reject him. So in a way, they had a relational contract where they both said, okay, we will not side with Daniel, our child. I will not side with Daniel, my dad said, in the ways that you're rejecting him, traumatizing him, and abusing him. 
to my mom and my mom would do the same in reverse to him. So in a way they would both be able to have this freedom to do bad things to me with no negative consequences. So I had no defender. As time went on later, as I grew up, as I became more independent from them, as I broke away from them, when I was no longer legally their property, <laughs> literally, which I realized I was, I could start defending myself and then I saw how they reacted. They didn't like it. They hated me. They scapegoated me for defending myself. They called me even more names. All, they blamed me for the different ways in which they had once traumatized me. And they found all sorts of new ways to put things on me. Even though they had separated, I realized my parents still defended each other more than they sided with me. So I see that danger for them inciting for the child and also danger for myself inciting for the child even when I was an adult siding with the child that I once was because it even still got me rejected from my family system. I say I broke from my parents but really on a deeper level what happened was that I started siding with me. I started siding not only with the me that I am now deep on the inside but the historical child who I once was and the historical child that still lived hurt inside of me. And the more I sided with that child and the truth of me, the more that they rejected me even more. So it wasn't that I necessarily broke from my family so much, it's more that they threw the true me out. They hated the true me. They rejected that. Siding with the child of me, historically or present, was a crime in my family system. And then I think back also to talk a little bit more about my time as a therapist, a big part of why I didn't want to work with children. Because I had figured out even before I became a therapist that if you take the child's side too much, the parents won't like it. Also, if you take the child's side too much in relationship with the child, the child starts to feel nurtured. The child starts to feel really nourished. The child starts to feel honored. The child feels seen. They're allowed to feel their feelings. They love that feeling. And then what happens is they leave the therapy office and they go back to this family system that is re rejecting them and abandoning them and they actually become less safe. One thing I've certainly talked about with a lot of therapists who did work with children who said, ah, I gotta be really careful about siding too much with the child because if I side too much with the child, the parents will just pull them out of therapy. They'll say, I don't want you to be seeing this therapist who is corrupting you, corrupting you by siding with you against me. It's kind of like when the parents pay for therapy, what they're really paying the therapist to do is to side with the parents often against the child. Even in social work school, when I was learning how to become a therapist in a formal, conventional, academic way, one of my social work professors even overtly said it. Be careful about siding too much with the child because if you side too much with the child, it can make the child's life too dangerous, or the parents will simply yank the child out of therapy. You have to walk that fine line between acknowledging how to really support the child, but also how to support the parents to keep them happy enough so they will keep their kid coming to therapy. And I thought, that is disgusting. That's awful. So what really you're doing is you're not really taking your client's side because you don't want them to get pulled out of therapy. Really often what I think therapists do when they do this, when they really are siding more with the parents or even partially with the parents against their client, is they just want the money to keep coming and they want to keep this person coming and coming and coming so they can keep a paying client coming. Basically, they are working for the parents. They are working for the person in the power position in this relationship and their so-called client really isn't their client. The real client is the parent. And so often that's exactly what parents want when they send their child to therapy. They're paying this therapist to do X, Y, and Z to their child. They are not paying for their child to have a real, deep, true, honest ally. To have that real ally for their child would be disruptive to the family system. So <laughs> that's a big part of why I don't even want to participate in this. I don't want to be a part of that at all. And then I think about one other strange thing, one other danger for me 
inciting with the child. And that is using, for example, these YouTube videos or things that I've written that side with the child. And I'm talking the child inside of an adult, the historical child in the life of an adult, someone who might be watching a video such as this. That not infrequently, I've seen that when I side too much with the child in their relationship with their parents, some adult who might be watching this or reading some of this, it can be very threatening to people. People can feel overwhelmed because they can start to feel their historical feelings. They can start to remember what happened to them in their relationship to their parents. They can start to feel their post-traumatic pain and anger and sadness and rage even and grief, those feelings of rejection and abandonment. And that can be overwhelming to a person and they can say, Ugh, I don't want to listen to this guy. This guy brings me back to too many feelings. Sometimes people like to stay in a more dissociated state. And if you really side with the child who they once were and the child who still lives inside of them, their dissociation can start to break. And what can come up is their anguish, their depression, their sadness, their frustration, their dissatisfaction, their hatred perhaps even of their own historical parents. And that can be very threatening to their life, becoming anguished and depressed and frustrated and angry and sad even to move toward grieving. A lot of people don't want that, so they can avoid people who side with their child. They can actually gravitate more toward people who side with their own parents. I know many people who pick partners like this. They pick a romantic partner. They pick best friends who side with their parents. They don't want partners or friends often who side with the child within them because that will disrupt their historical family system. They actually want to replicate relationships that are very much like the relationship they had with their parents. And so people who side with the child within them, side with their historical child, People like that can be very dangerous to them. Better to reject them, better to block them out, say those people are crazy, those people are wallowing in misery, etc., etc. Even just blame them, project anger and rage onto those people to be able to discount them. And then, very briefly, as I conclude this video, I would like to talk about the positive sides of siding with the child. Siding with the child inside of myself, for starters. It has been the ticket for me to grow, the ticket for me to grieve, to heal, to evolve as a human being, to come back to the truth of me, back to my creative spirit, back to my motivation, my self-love, my maturity, my ethics, my better behavior, <laughs> back to getting away from the people who are harming me, back to being able to have a better sense of who is healthy. I've found better friends, better relationships at all sorts of levels. That is through siding with the child in me, fighting for who I always was, going against my parents, against these bad behaviors that they had toward me and saying, no, I'm allowed to feel my feelings. I'm allowed to grieve. I'm allowed to heal. I'm allowed to come back to me and nourish and honor me just like I always should have had done toward me. I can become the parent in my own life. So part one that's wonderful about siding with the child is that it allows me the number one ally in my life and that is my adult self. My adult self can nourish the child within me that isn't fully healed but has been healing massively so that I can manifest as a true, proper, loving adult in the world. And what that leads to is that I can side with other people, the child, the wounded child within other people out in the world, especially other adults who are on the precipice of growing, of healing, of grieving. I can provide support for them in all sorts of different ways, if only just through a video like this to say, you know, the child within you was wounded, was harmed, was rejected, was betrayed, was abandoned in all sorts of different ways in general and in specific. And the only way that you can possibly really grow, heal, and evolve is at some level to take the side of that child. And the more I have taken the side of my child and worked to heal that child, and that child within me has grown massively, the more that I intuitively and reflexively take the side of the child 
by watching other people in dynamics between people and their actual children and the dynamics inside of people in their own relationship with the child within them. I can see much more the child within them and say, that is who you need to focus on. Those feelings are the nexus for how you can grow, how you can break your dissociation, how you can begin to feel all those horrible anguished feelings, how you can honor your depression and say that's a stage that you need to go through that's better than being shut down because your child within you, the child that you once were, had every right in the world to feel depressed, sad, anxious, frustrated, overwhelmed, full of rage and hatred and sadness. And now as an adult, the more that you side with that child and you honor those feelings, you can take those feelings and convert them into something healthier. You cannot grieve if you cannot side with the child you once were. And grieving is the process of taking all those painful, anguished feelings, the rage and the sadness and all that, the loss, the painfulness, and converting it into something that propels you, propels me forward, into a mature state of loving ourselves, of being there for ourselves. And the more that I side with the child within me, and the more that anyone out there sides with the child within them, the more that actually we all become adults. And that's more of what the world needs now, more than ever.